Well, hello there. Welcome to the Total Woman Show. I am so excited. We're kicking off our new series of the Total Woman Shows for 2019. So today I'm so honored to be able to have my BFFs here. I have to my right, Dr. Carol Soloway, who is a, would you believe this? She is a chiropractor by day and a medical examiner by night. I'm telling you, you're gonna tell people about that. And to my left, I have my other BFF, Dr. Cecile Lacalco who is the smile dentist. Well, at night, I'm not sure what she does. <laughs> but, anyway, but she is the smile dentist. And so we're gonna to talk today about relationships and how we all got together and now are absolutely three amazing women that are working together. And I'm so excited to have you guys on the show today. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank and you, you, thank you. And so just a here. little note, that they're going to be my regular co-host with every show, possibly if Cecile is here, if Carol is not here, but we'll have one or the other who'll be with me on the Total Woman shows. I'm so excited, I really am, because you know, the, the backstory of how we met was through, <laughs> was actually through what I call connecting networks. And as you know, there are many professional women that belong to different organizations today. I mean, anywhere from you know the National Association of Women or the National Association of Female Executives. I mean, there are a number of organizations. Wow, uh, there are so many women, women who lead. But I happen to meet these two women with an organization, and I'll give a little shout out for it. E yes. Women. Uh, so you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, organized and founded by Sandra. Yancy. Yes. So Sandra, you need to, you know, post this show. Let me know. <laughs> I gave you a big shout out. But basically, I met them at an e-women conference. And so we had an opportunity, or I did, to go to Dallas. They were having a big conference in Dallas, Texas. And so these two women mm -hmm. convinced me to go. And I was like, at the last minute, and it was like no hotel accommodations at that time, because we're looking at about 800 women coming to that conference in Dallas, Texas. Not more. Yeah. Not more. So mm, yeah. Uh, Carol, I think, suggested <laughs> that, that maybe I could room with them, <laughs> Dr. Lukalko. Maybe she wouldn't mind, because I had not really gotten to know Dr. Lukalko yet. And That's so, right. bottom line, Dr. LaCalco said, it's okay. I'm sure you gave a big plug for me, I did. didn't you? It was you really hard. Did. It was really <laughs> hard. I, I worked. <laughs> and so I ended up in Dallas, Ooh, Texas. <laughs> I ended up in Dallas, Texas, and I had a place to go in this lovely hotel, lovely hotel room. But the hotel room, as many of you know, not, it wasn't a suite. It had two queen beds. Right. Okay, well, I'm going to sleep on the floor, or can we get a cot, well, a cot a, you know, room. something to, mm -hmm. the hotel couldn't accommodate that. And so the, the thing that I am sharing here, and I mean this from my heart, was I fell in love with both these ladies because Carol, Dr. Carol, <laughs> comes with a backpack. She's got <laughs> a, a, a blow-up mattress that she blows up and puts on the floor and sleeps on the floor so I can have the queen bed. Now we argued about that, but you wanted to, you said, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. I wasn't part of that argument. No, I was you sleeping weren't. on my bed. I mean, this one, this one was sleep, she was a princess sleeping in the other bed. And but, I said, I'm so much younger. <laughs> See what I have to deal with? <laughs> and so she ended up uh, on the floor, and we were there for, what, three nights? Yeah, but we didn't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and, but the thing that endeared me, and um, mm -hmm. I mean this from my heart, was Carol, not only did she sleep on the floor, but I was in the process of getting my book out, and she actually edited my book. <laughs> I couldn't <Yeah>. sleep anyway. <laughs> so. And I don't want to tell you how many errors she found, but. <clears throat> she oh, well. found quite a few, but but anyway, that mm -hmm. book today, we'll talk about books later, but I just wanted to really share basically our back backdraft story and about relationships among women, professional women, and how we can build relationships. We've had our yeah. setbacks, we've had our obstacles, we've had our <laughs> challenges, but we had our triumphs too. And But basically, the show is about women and forging relationships. And uh, I had said this earlier to, to the both of you when we were in the green room about the Me Too movement, and this is the year of the woman, 
But we're talking today about another Me Too movement, a Me Too where women come together and share and can forge wonderful relationships professionally and personally. Mm -hmm. So that's what I wanted to share with you out there, how these women uh, have impacted my life. So I think it's gonna be a great uh, conversation. And you know, I want you women, our men out there, if you'd like to write us or you wanna give us comments, you're welcome to do that at info at transformationforsuccess.com. So I just wanted to put that little plug in because you can do that at any time and mm -hmm. comment and let us know what you think about this show. We're going to be asking that every week that we're going to be uh, having different guests on the show. We're going to talk about a range of topics that some of them might be controversial. But since we are really uh, reaching women in different countries and we want to be sensitive to some of the issues that you're grappling with out there, so we share our hearts. Our comments are ours uniquely ours. You may agree, and some of you may not agree with some of the comments or some of the statements that we make, but they're from our heart. So I just want to thank you today for tuning in to the Total Woman Show. Yay! 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 yay. <laughs> so Carol, I mean, you know, I gave you Better all that. I mean, <laughs> and Cecile? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so the thing is, you know, I think it's important to talk about what we like about each other. Uh, because so many women can be, you know, a little bit like I don't. We we don't have that. And the thing that I admire is that we've been able to share confidences mm -hmm. uh, and not be concerned whether they're going to be passed along to other people. But mm -hmm. there are things, and even right, that there are yes. things that she may share with me that you may not share with Cecile. Cecile may share with me that she does not share with. Oh, <gasps> really? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> now you know. Now you know. <laughs> It's out. It's out. I told it. <laughs> but that is the, the most important component of having you two as friends. I know that whatever I say is not going to go any further. Mm -hmm. And that is a, a quality. Yes, a blessing. That's, really? You took the mm -hmm. words right out. Mm -hmm. Well, you didn't take them out of my mouth. You, you came up with them. They're mm -hmm. much smarter than I was going to. But um, that is so important. Mm -hmm. And that is so rare also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is true. That is, is true. Right. Well, you know, one of the things um, that, you know, I think that uh, our viewers need to know, too, is that we aren't friends that are coming from 20 years of friendship or we grew up as... Yeah, as, that's as, true. You, you know, we yeah, grew but, up and, <laughs> and knew each other in high school. T and, totally different backgrounds. I mean, oh my totally God. different <laughs> backgrounds. Yes. But, but, you know, I, I'm intrigued because one of the things I wanted to end the show is to share what we do and how we came to be where we are today. So, mm -hmm. Cecile, I know you're from the Philippines yes. and you're a dentist mm -hmm. and you really are great. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, wait a, a minute. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> she's a smile dentist. So, just share a little bit about your background and why okay. you're in the dentistry. Uh, why, why did, why I did go you go into, into dentistry? Well, that's a very, very interesting question because I did not, unlike one of my best friends growing mm -hmm. up, uh, actually I had two people in my life who wanted to be dentists all their lives. Oh, and okay. one of them is a dentist mm -hmm. and one of them is not a dentist, but she was the one who actually, because of her, I got into dentistry. Mm -hmm. um, in our senior year in high school, she said she's going to go to the counselor and she was going to discuss her entry into pre-dental school. And I said, okay, I'll go with you. Mm -hmm. And while we were there, she was being told that the requirements of mm -hmm. it. And I said, that sounds interesting. And she told me that because I had the grades, I didn't have mm -hmm. to take an entrance exam to go into pre-dental school, and I was going to get a scholarship. Okay. And I said, okay, that sounds interesting. So <laughs> uh -huh. I went to, to pre-dental school as a result of that. Wow. wow. But I was thinking, I, don't, I didn't think it was for me, but everything that was uh, about, let's say, for example, um, uh, what would you call this? Physics. Our mm -hmm. physics was mm -hmm. geared toward dentistry, mm -hmm. um, biochemistry. Everything was geared toward dentistry, I see. toward wow. the mouth oh. and the health. Yeah, that's Your the way it was. Your prerequisite? No, the pre-dental. Yeah, everything oh, was geared toward dentistry. dentistry. It was very interesting. That is interesting. Mm -hmm. And I loved math, and I never had to study for it. And I loved chemistry. So I was thinking, well, maybe if for my 
um, after graduating from pre-dental school, maybe I'll go into actuary or to chemistry. Mm -hmm. But then somebody from the dental school came to the school to let us know about the requirements to get into the dental program. And I fit all the requirements that I didn't have to take the exam. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so another one that I dodged a bullet. I did not like reading about oral anatomy and things like that at first until um, I told my mom, mom, I think this is not for me. And she said, well, I didn't think so either. <laughs> well, that, that's... But you're there, so let's see. And okay. the first time I took care of a patient, though, it was just doing a cleaning, really, on a patient. I said, I could do this. There's actual interaction with people. And I stayed, and I loved it. And I've loved it ever since. And I've, the more that I do it, the more mm -hmm. I loved it. So it wasn't something I regretted doing. Mm -hmm. It's not... I, you know, some things we fall in love with at first, but we fall out of love. Like That's husbands. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Our exes. <No. laughs> but but um, for me, I liked it more and more because there's so much variety. There's so much to learn. I've learned from a lot of good people, a lot of great dentists. So. I've had good mentors, and that's how I got into dentistry. You know, it's such a uh, fascinating story because, you know, a lot of people say, well, I had a vision or a purpose or I felt yes. that I was, you know, destined to go into this, and I really loved it, and, and yours is just the opposite. Yeah. I mean, but again, for those of you out there, and I hope we have a lot of young people who are listening that sometimes, you know, your destiny is not maybe tied up into what mm -hmm. you like, but you'll find mm -hmm. that you love it later. Yes. And you have the grades. Yes. And, um, I, well, yeah. I admire you because I think you're a great dentist. Thank you. You've got the personality to go it. with it, too. Thank you. Know, you. And that, that's what matters. <laughs> but this woman here, I mean, she has to have two professors, medical examiner yes. and chiropractor. Oh, so way Carol, more than that, dear. Well, <laughs> oh, a lot more. Oh, just tell us more. I mean, wow. She I, was, I, I was an English teacher. Yeah. That's right. I could have, let me just back up and say, you know, to the viewers, when I first met this woman, <laughs> I talked to her all over the phone. And she said, I've had six careers. Do you remember oh, telling me that? No, she I said, don't remember yes, that. Yes, she did. You said, I've had about five or six <laughs> careers. You know. And I was like, what? And she said, I was an English teacher, and I was this and this. So, okay. Ten years, so, every decade. Every, is different. That's right. Yeah. You said, and you, mm -hmm. and you changed careers. So tell us about that. I was an English teacher for years. Well, and Carol, let's go back. She started about when she was in high school. What made you decide to become an English teacher? Were you good? I loved, I loved literature. Okay. Loved it. Okay. That, that's my passion. Mm -hmm. And I decided to become an English teacher. I was an English teacher. I uh, graduated college at 19. I was teaching by 20 and went for a master's. And then I decided, you know what? I want to do something to really help people. So I decided I wanted to go to physical therapy school. But teaching English wasn't helping people? <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm going to be an advocate here. It was teaching not English people. was helping people, <laughs> but I wanted to help people who had physical okay. problems. Okay. I wanted to All go right. that route. I want more hands-on. Mm -hmm. So I applied to NYU and Columbia to be a physical therapist. Wow. I got into Columbia. At the interview at NYU, and this is the year of the woman, the the person who interviewed me told me, I would not accept you because you have three children at home and you can't be serious about a career. Wow. Do you hear well, that, ladies? Was oh, that a woman oh, who said that? Oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. So oh. I decided. 1970-something? Yes. Oh, which were you there? Uh, which were basically you there? tells yeah. us. Yeah, yeah that's had... her experience. And so she's projecting it on to you. That's yeah. exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah. So I decided, okay, well, I'm going to go to Columbia. We lived down on the island, and I had three children, and I just couldn't make all the, the commute. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. there was a chiropractic school down the street, and that's <laughs> how I picked my career. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, okay. Okay. All right, we're oh, going to go. No, yours. No, you no, no, yours no, but, I mean, but the medical examiner. Oh, okay. I was a chiropractor for years and years. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, my son came into my practice, and... Now my grandson's in chiropractic oh, school. It's amazing. Wonderful. It's so wonderful. And the school knows who she oh, is. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. we we, my son and I were examiners, national board examiners, and we were at the chiropractic school, and our professor was there, and she said, 
I know your grandson. He's in oh. my class. Oh. I love that story. Uh, uh, Carol, I just have this question. When you were in that school, how many women were actually in the school? Good question. There were n probably nine women in our class. And how many and men? Now, how many men? Um, no. I think there were a hundred. Okay. And now, nine women. Now, now. It's, there are more than 50% are women now. This is interesting. You yeah. know, um, the, you know, I could really go off on a, on a tangent to talk about uh, chiropractic medicine and the kinds of things that we're having and experiencing today in terms of patients and well, what, it's the uh, same some, for dentistry. I'm you know, sure. for dentistry. Actually, it's very interesting because when I came here, I was already a dentist in the Philippines. I graduated mm -hmm. from there. In the Philippines, so the, I graduated from the University of the East, which would be equivalent to a USC here, it's a right. private school, right. and. In that school, uh, out of probably 200 uh, people in the class, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say there were 10 men. Most of us no. were women. Yeah. So oh, when I came wait, here, I attended... Wait a minute. When was that? Nine, what year? Wow. Really? Well, really? <laughs> 1987 yeah. is when I graduated. Yeah. Big yeah. difference. Yeah. Okay. Big yeah. difference. But it was all women, practically. And then when I came here, I, got, I went into a seminar room at the... California Dental Association convention, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. CDA convention here, that was the very first one I attended. When I walked into the room, there were no women, very, very few. Oh. I could count it in my fingers. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. it, it was oh, yeah. amazing to me that yeah. there were a lot more male dentists in California or maybe all over the U.S. at that time right. compared to women. Yep. Now, yep. It's, yeah. it's about 40% women, 50%, I mean, 60% men, I think. So women have entered into the field of oh, medicine, yes. which is, which is very good, big yes, time. Very but much, medical so. legal, because I'm a qualified medical examiner by mm -hmm. the state, mm -hmm. and that, uh, that you no, know, women are not in that. There are not that, I would mm -hmm. say when I go to a seminar, and I usually do have a little part teaching mm -hmm. with one mm -hmm. group at a seminar, mm -hmm. I would say that there are about Five women to a hundred men also. Who That's are amazing. The, cute, the qualified That's amazing. medical examiner, the, the women have not, because there's a lot of, you know, uh, record review and it, it's just so time consuming. Yeah. You can't do it with the family, really. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, so that probably <laughs> prohibits a lot of people from going into that particular field. Yeah. Unless you, know, you have a wonderful husband who doesn't care. <laughs> shout out to Wayne. Shout out, <laughs> shout out Wayne. Wayne. Hear, shout that? Out. <laughs> Hear that, Wayne. He is the best. Well, you know, it's interesting because both of you are in the medical field and somewhat, and here I am uh, a, I actually in higher ed. Uh, but my story began, you know, I started out in higher ed as a secretary and secretary to a college president who called me in one day and said, you'll never have my job. And I said, watch my smoke. <laughs> and so, I mean, that was kind of a wake up call for me. But I was feeling like I was at a deficit because I did not have a bachelor's degree. And many of the people thought I had a bachelor's degree because I had gone to UC Berkeley at 15, but I had not graduated. So people assumed that I had gone to a university but I didn't tell them I didn't go. I didn't tell them I didn't graduate. I went, but I didn't tell them. nobody asked me when you graduate. You know, I mean, they that wasn't know. a question that people usually asked during that time. But you know, wake up call, uh, frankly, for me in terms of my career of at age uh, 19, I made up my mind and I felt in my spirit I wanted to help people. I wanted to make a difference in the world, but I didn't know how, I didn't know when, I didn't know where. But all I knew is I wanted to make a difference and I wrote it down in a journal at 19. Oh. So here I stand today as a woman of means, a, <laughs> a seasoned woman, uh, when I mean that, a seasoned woman of 81. Uh, I don't Ooh. mind sharing my Ooh. age, but going, going back to school, making that decision at 36 to enter into higher education again and complete a degree in three years, and then go mm. to get a, get a master's and go to get a doctorate at age 49. So wow. for me, but the interesting thing that is a correlation here is that I was one of two women in my class in 1990 to graduate with a PhD from USC. In 1990? 1990, two African-American wow. women. But wow. two African-American women. But what about other women? How many women were in your class? <laughs> Very few. Hmm. But the fact that when we graduated was only me and one other African-American female wow. graduating from USC in 1990. 
So you see, but of course, there's, and, and one of my goals was to really inspire and to help women realize no matter what age, you can yes. achieve and you can be, and you can go back and get that degree no matter how old you may be. If yeah, that's a desire in your heart and you feel that is your purpose, and that led me into being a college professor and a higher education administrator for like almost 37 years and an adjunct professor for 12 years, or 12, 13, there were a few. But I have loved it because mm -hmm. I love working with people and helping them to find themselves and to know that there's a better life. And so here we are. I've seen you, know, you do it. Tom? I've seen you do it. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you talk to people. Thank mm -hmm. you. Including I, I, us. <laughs> but I love it. But you know, it's like how we all, as sister friends, we have our paths, but they intersect yeah. so beautifully. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think has been so marvelous about, about our relationship. You know, Carol, one of the things that you are uh, president uh, of the Orange County chapter of the International Association of Women. And why not? I have the most amazing vice president. <laughs> oh, you do? Yeah, I, I do. It's un she's unbelievable. That's how I can run the meeting and do everything. <laughs> You're That's how you can do your book tour it's coming up. <laughs> That's right, because I have yeah. this amazing vice president who yes. covers for me. You think she can handle it? I think she can. <laughs> <laughs> She's too much. She's too much. But but tell us a little bit. Wait, tell I, them who's the vice president. <laughs> I can't tell them who's the vice president. <laughs> Yours truly. But but who wouldn't want to be a vice president to a president like Carol? Really, I wouldn't have done it had it not been for you, Carol. Truly. And the fact that it's making a difference with women. I really love this really? organization, and I wanted you to share a little bit about it. And I'm giving another shout out to a woman. Again, so this is me too, and that is um, Star Jones. Star Jones. <laughs> Uh, who founded this organization, which was called the National Association of Professional, Professional. Women. Mm -hmm. Right. Was. And so now it's called uh, the International Association of Women. So share just a little bit, because when we talk about sister friends and we talk about the relationship between women and how we're actually able to, or we should be, uh, helping one another, tell us a little bit about IUW, because you've been in this organization for some time. Well, I've been, I've been in the organization, but it's basically, well, like I tell the women when they come to the meeting, mm -hmm. we're not looking for, don't, if you're coming here to sell a lipstick or, or, or whatever, we're not, it's, we're not interested. We want to know your story. We mm -hmm. want to know mm -hmm. why you're here, what we can do together. Mm -hmm. And networking, what did I hear somebody, um, uh, Keith Ferrazzi said, networking is generosity, not greed. Mm -hmm. I like that. And yeah, mm -hmm. and we want to we want to know, you know, how we can connect with you, mm -hmm. and not what your product is. Right. We and want how to we know can serve you. each other. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. Exactly. And that's what what I'm trying to foster in our particular chapter. Well, you're actually doing a good job. You really are. Here. I love the organization, and not that I don't want other organizations. And I know there are a lot of organizations out there that are helping women. And yeah. I, I want to applaud you, those of you who are in these organizations, or you may be a president, or you may be a chair person of a board that's helping women. But it's all about us helping each other. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I know you've been with eWomen for some mm -hmm. time, and I want you to just share a little bit about your experience as we sort of wrap up this show today. Um, eWomen is an organization <laughs> that people come in, you don't necessarily just hand out your business cards. Mm -hmm. You talk about your goals mm -hmm. and what you're planning to do mm -hmm. so that people could contribute to mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. it is you um, you mm -hmm. are hoping to accomplish. Right. So you could say something like you need a connection with somebody, uh, with a printer for example, mm -hmm. and if somebody knows somebody then they refer you to that right, person. Right. But it's more than that. It's more than the business networking, really. Because what really happens is after the meetings, mm -hmm. when people talk, you know, like we did, mm -hmm. like we do mm -hmm. with other women, right. Absolutely. Yes, uh, we, stay. we stay after the meeting just because we want to get to know each other. Right. Uh, w whether you have a lot of friends or you don't, you'll find friends, you'll make mm -hmm. more friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those friendships in these networking groups really is up to the people in it. But mm -hmm. so Good far, point. the eWomen group that we have in Orange County, 
work so well, I think, because of the friendships that are forged right. outside of the right. actual meeting. Right now, our president is Diana Sabatino, who's She's doing a amazing. great job. Yeah. Yes. Shout out to Diana Sabatino. Oh my gosh, yeah. those two women. Right. They are just right. amazing. Right. But I think all the members contribute to that. You know, That's great. The and she has a very so strong. She has a very strong leadership team. Yes. 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 Uh, you know what? That, that's what yeah. makes it. Oh, you are? Are you? I didn't know you yeah. were in the leadership team. Yes, she I've been on for three <laughs> years. Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> well, you know that's what makes it work. And I, I just want to say I hope that you guys have and listeners out there and viewers that you have really learned something today just about us and how we interact and some of the things that we're involved in a little bit about our <laughs> backdraft story. But I want to encourage you to know that no woman is an island. We hear that yep. no man is an island. No woman is an island unto that yourself. That is so true. And so just reach out uh, and know that, Sister Girl, we're here with you. And we want you to join us in our journey over these next few weeks on the Total Woman Show because we're going to have subjects and topics that you're going to enjoy hearing and learning about. We're inclusive, so we're, we want you to join us and we want you to be sure to write us and let us know and give us your comments and feedback. And if you'd like to hear, have something else or you know, another topic for us to discuss, we'd be happy to do that. So again, I want to say thank you for tuning in today. This is the Total Woman Show and this is Barbara and Carol and <laughs> Cecile saying <laughs> goodbye and we see you next week. we got another show with the three of us and we're going to be talking about authors and books. This yes. woman has written some books <laughs> and we're going to talk about her books. These women have written <laughs> of all of us. Thank you. Bye-bye and be blessed. Be blessed. Thank you. <laughs>